because I am the skater boy now. This helmet's not going to work with my headset on. But what we're going to be looking at here is Snell's Law. Um, and Snell's Law has to deal with the bending of light, which is a weird thing. And as I have to turn my head to look at a different monitor, everything's going to fall apart. There it goes. Um, when we look at Snell's Law, uh, we think about the bending of light here. And uh, when we think about light bending, um, it's often helpful to think back to what we already know from a mechanical perspective and carry that into uh, this ray optics idea. So let's imagine this for a second. Um, let's imagine that you have a skateboard and you know at school I've got a bunch of these but at home all I've got is this tech deck here. Um, and let's imagine that you're riding your skateboard uh, down a hill, like you're bombing a hill, right? And uh, when you take your skateboard, you accidentally turn off of the road and you hit the grass, okay? Well, when we think about your skateboard, you know, it's got four wheels on it. This is a poorly drawn skateboard. Of these four wheels, of wheels one, two, three, and four, which wheel do you think is going to hit the grass first? So if we take this skateboard down, here's the grass, here's the skateboard, take the skateboard down, 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 ding, that is wheel number three. So we're gonna get this wheel here, wheel number three is gonna strike the grass first. Now. What is going to happen if that wheel strikes the grass first? Well, you know, the skateboard, all the wheels are moving at the same speed across the asphalt ground, right? You know, this is the road up here. When this wheel three right here, when it strikes the grass, it's gonna get like quagmired, right? It's gonna stop rolling as fast. And if it's not rolling as fast, the other wheels are, and what's going to occur is this skateboard is going to turn down, okay? It's going to turn down. So instead of pointing, you know, kind of down and to the right, the skateboard's gonna point more like this all of a sudden. It is turned. And it's going to turn until wheel four reaches the grass. Because as soon as wheel four reaches the grass, then wheel three and wheel four in the front will start rotating at the same rate, and they will both pull the skateboard forward. Okay? So that's what's going to be happening there. We're going to get a rotation of this skateboard. And we are going to see a very similar thing happen with light. If we roll this to the lab in the back. So in the lab in the back here, um, what we have, and let's pan the camera up, whoop, what we have here is a block of Lexite. It's plexiglass, okay? So it looks clear, but you can kind of see it existing there. It's got a little bit of waviness to it. What we also have here is a, a laser pointer. So if we, you know, kind of shine it, da, there's a laser pointer. How cool is that, right? Now, if we shine the laser pointer um, perpendicular to the glass. So the glass is running across here on the top, on the top surface. If I shine the laser pointer perpendicular, notice that it strikes straight through the plexiglass, the lexite. Now, if I turn the laser pointer, notice how right now my laser pointer, it is pointing like that. It is nearly horizontal. But when it strikes the Lexite, the plexiglass, look at that. That is going like down into the plexi. It should be going just like froink across, but it's not. It's going down into it like that. This light is turning in some amount. And you know, when we're normal, when we're perpendicular, we don't see a turn. We just see the laser. And then as we twist, we begin to see this bending and bending and bending of the light, which is a really weird thing here. Um, and we can actually see it you know, in, in different ways. If we, if we shine it from the side here, we can see it like that. We see it at the top, we see this. 
um, we see this bending of light. So it's this really weird phenomenon that's going on. And we have to ask ourselves, why is the light bending? What is going on here when we transition from the air into this plexiglass lexite surface? So let's see what's going on. Let's roll it back into the classroom now, and we'll talk about this. So if we take a look what's happening here, our skateboard, when it hit that new medium, when it hit the grass, it had to slow down. Well, for our Lexite, what's happening here is when this ray of light strikes the glass, it's slowing down as well. If we think about light on a kind of micro level, or like if we kind of think like a super zoomed in level, wheel three on the light up front is going to strike the glass before all of the other wheels, especially wheel four. And in doing this, we're going to turn this ray of light. So what we see is that when this ray of light um, comes in and it strikes this medium, okay, because, you know, right here, this is like the plexiglass, and this is air on the outside, we are going to get a turn. And the way we define this turn is that if we draw a line normal to the plexiglass surface, so here is a normal line right here, okay, it's perpendicular, or as perpendicular as I can draw it on the screen. This light, as it comes through, is going to bend and it's going to bend uh, depending on the material itself. It's gonna depend based off of, you know, where did we start and where did we finish? In the case of the plexiglass, we are going to see that we're going to bend towards the normal. Just like the skateboard slowed down entering the grass, our light is going to slow down as it enters into this plexi. And what we can say here is that the angle up top, this is theta one, and the angle down below from the normal here, this is theta two. There is a relationship between these two angles that tell us information about the air and the plexiglass itself. Whenever we're traveling through a surface um, or a material, a medium, whatever it is, uh, these surfaces, these mediums, air, plexiglass, water, whatever it is, um, they have what are known as indexes of refraction. And what we mean by that is refraction is the property of light physically bending. We see the bend here. Um, and the index of that is a uh, amount that it can bend relative to a vacuum. So an index of refraction can be defined as n, this is the index of refraction, it's equal to the speed of light, and if you recall, this is a constant, this is approximately three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, but it's equal to the speed of light divided by a velocity, and this is the speed of light. But it's the speed of light in the medium. What this means is that when we go from the air to the plexiglass, we are slowing the light down. And because of this, our indexes, indexes of refraction will always be one or greater. So n must be greater than or equal to one. In fact, n only equals one if you're in a vacuum. Any other time, n will have an index of refraction greater than one. Most indexes of refraction that we deal with are like one, 1.2, one and a half. Um, technically, they could become infinitely large, uh, but that kind of gets weird because now you're like dividing by zero and you just broke mathematics. Um, there are some diamonds that have been created and fabricated that have indexes of refraction of into the 30s and 50s, and that's extraordinarily large. Um, but it has to be a value greater than one. Most of the time we'll stick around one and a half-ish, okay? But these are indexes of refraction. Now, if we were to continue this line down, so we'll go back to our plexiglass here, and if we were to continue this line down, we'd strike 
this barrier here again. We'd hit the plexiglass. And what would happen here is that we would bend once again. If we actually bring this normal line all the way through, what we would find is that when this plexi or when this light hits the plexiglass and comes back into the air, remember the outside here is air, we'd get a bend once again. And it turns out that the bend we get is the original line back. Because remember, there would have to be a normal line situated right here. And we would see that this angle would indeed be theta one. So it's kind of interesting uh, that we see that with light. Now this property of the bending of light having these indexes refraction, we refer to this as Snell's law. And Snell's law uh, can be given by the following equation. So if we wanted to look at that in the lab, we can run over and then if we take a look at this, we see here's the light coming in, here it is refracting, and then here's the light right here. It's bending back away from the normal to recreate the same angle we had up top. You know, this light's coming in, it's going the same angle, which has got shifted over because of this bending on the inside. So if we wanted to have an equation for this, Snell's law can be set up uh, with the following equation here. We know we're going to need something with angles, and we know we need these indexes of fraction. Uh, Snell's law then is stated as the following. The index of refraction of the first medium you're in, N1, multiplied by the sine of theta 1, that's, you know, your angle outside, that has to be equal to the index of refraction inside the new medium multiplied by the sine of angle 2 inside that new me medium. This is Snell's law. This is super duper important. Now there's one, uh, there's a few interesting things that we can do with Snell's law that we'll talk about in a future video, but for the end of this video, here's something interesting I'd like to talk about. If we are slowing light down, you know, plexiglass, it has an index of refraction, I believe, of something around 1.51 which means that we're slowing the light down when it enters this new medium. If we're slowing light down, then something physically about that light has to change. If you recall, possibly from a chemistry course, you might recall that the speed of light C is equal to the uh, frequency, which sometimes is written as nu or sometimes is written as F, multiplied by the wavelength of that light. If we're slowing the speed of light down, one of these two values has to physically change, or maybe both of them are changing. So which one is actually changing here? Well, it turns out, and we'll see this later on in the year, that our frequency must remain constant. The reason why the frequency must remain constant is the energy of a photon of light is given to us by h f or h nu if you're using uh, nu for your frequency this h is planck's constant this is a quantum mechanics kind of thing it's kind of a modern physics um, but that is the energy of a photon of light we slowed the light down but it still has the same amount of energy in that photon of light because of that this frequency must remain constant what we are slowing down or what we are changing in the light is we're changing its wavelength when it enters a new medium. That is what is physically changing. We're changing the wavelength of the light and that is causing these bends here. And as we're gonna see in some future videos, um, if we're changing the wavelength of a light, this kind of implies that, does light act as a wave then? Huh. And I guess that's an entire new subject of optics and physics uh, when we get there. So we'll see that in a future video. But for right now, um, we are still talking about Snells and interesting things we can do with that, which will pop up uh, next. So until then, adios and take it easy.